Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Rogers, and the other free mentor will be Keo. Today, we just had a few changes, so we had to switch up the meeting time, but I made this recording in order to get us up to speed and introduce the concepts in the first week. So you're probably wondering, what is IEEE in free? IEEE is the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. We're one of the world's largest and most professional organization for the advancement of technology. And one cool fact about us is that we have over 423,000 members in over 160 countries around the world. So at the basis of this program is that freshman retention in electrical engineering that stands for free, is targeted towards freshmen and non-electrical engineering majors. However, we accept anyone. We're very open, organic in this program. So even if you're not a freshman, if you're not, um, maybe you're a transfer or a junior, like it's totally fine if you join this. So we're going to do some projects and learn about hardware and software. And so, you know, uh, Discord is our primary method of communication, and we have all the links provided here to our Discord, website, Instagram, and YouTube. And so here's the schedule you guys can see. We're going to have to change the times due to a schedule change in my schedule, but we will keep you updated on that. But here will be all the lectures we'll give to you guys, and we'll also have two projects within this program. So my name's Brian. I'm a second year, and I'm doing applied uh, mathematics as my minor and electrical engineering as my major. And this past summer, I interned for Southern California Edison, whereas Keo, he's in his third year. He'll join us next week, and he's also in electrical engineering. So we had this video about uh, what is electronic and electrical engineering. So I'm going to share my computer sound right now. What is electronic and electrical engineering? Electronic and electrical engineering combines design creativity with scientific concepts to develop new electrical products, applications, and systems. But what does this really mean? It's designing new types of electronic materials and integrating these into systems. It's advancing healthcare by developing complex biosensors. It's researching systems, control, and propulsion for robotics and autonomous systems. It's developing better power distribution systems for renewable generation in electric vehicles. Electronic engineers are making more efficient, powerful, and universal electronics. Are these things you want to achieve? You might become an electronic engineer if you like combining maths and science, implementing new solutions, designing, building, and testing systems, using your knowledge in business environments, developing new ideas into usable products, taking your practical skills out of the lab and into the world. Studying electronic and electrical engineering involves learning theory in lectures, applying what you learn in practical lab sessions to real world problems, solving challenging mathematical engineering problems, exploring new technologies, designs, concepts and products, developing industrial strategies, understanding how to design systems from materials to circuit architectures and system hardware, working in teams to solve global engineering challenges. By doing these things, you'll gain more than electronic engineering theory. You'll have skills in critical thinking, problem solving, project management, and business acumen. You can work in industries like electronics, avionics and space, robotics, automotive, and information technology, preparing you to make an impact on the world sustainably. Okay, so there you can see um, is basically a summary a little in the video of what is electrical and electronics engineering. We have a flow chart here. Uh, so you guys know um, for your math classes, you have to take Calc 1, 2, and then Applied Mathematics and Calc 3. And you have to take entry level physics, and then uh, that's mechanics and heat, and you have to take electricity and magnetism, and then you take uh, quantum mechanics, but this can now be subbed out with EE220, which is material science in EE.
And so in your first year, you'll take a C coding class uh, 186, Engineering 101, which is just like an intro. It's very easy. It's just like you get introduced to the other engineering majors. And then an English credit. And to finish off your freshman year, you do Calc 2. Uh, you'll take your second physics course, uh, Digital Logic Design. So this is ones and zeros. You'll learn about bits. Engineering 102, so academic success. Then you'll take uh, EE description, like what is EE and how does it apply to the workforce, and you'll finish your English credit. So that will walk you through your first year. And so you guys know, let me clear those annotations real quick. EE has six concentrations. So we have communications, which is satellites. So you can see in the upper left image. We have controls, which is all robotics. If you have a TV remote, for instance, this one right here, that's using controls. Digital signal processing, that's ones and zeros, so on and off. We have electronics, so basically any device power, which is those huge transmission lines, or you can do your own sequence throughout this program. And so for communications, you guys have to focus on communication systems, which is basically sharing um, information through transmitters. So they send out the information and receivers that take in the information. So you have to work with space technology and optic fiber and co coax cables. And then controls. They make the controllers to make a system operate in a desired manner. So basically what you'll be doing is you'll be working with some microcontrollers. So I have one right here I'll show you guys. And then electric circuits, logic controllers, digital signal processors. And so it's a huge emphasis on programming different devices. And so for controls, what you have to do is you have to code the hardware and implement it. So I have an Arduino Uno here. So you'll be having to work with your um, microcontrollers in order to implement software on the hardware. Digital signal processing. So what you guys can see is DSP, we often refer to it as, is responsible for analog and digital signals. So right here, we got an analog wave. It's continuous. And then we have digital signals. So that turns the analog wave into a very straight symbol for on and off. So as you can see right here, it goes on and off, follows the exact same pattern as a wave. It goes up and then back down, then up. It's just on a time sequence here. So this zero means it's off, but the one here means it's on. And so at the one, it's on, the off, it's zero. And you can see here a digital wave formatted of this analog signal. So this is basically amplifying, filtering, or compressing signals in addition to detecting and correcting errors in order to try and make that digital signal appear as much as the analog signal here on the left. So we have converters between AC to DC and DC back to AC. Electronics. So for electronics, what we have is this is the hardware side of electrical engineering. We're gonna develop our circuits and the other devices. So common electrical components include our resistors. I have some right here to show you guys. Right here, um, let me see, does this, let me real quick. Okay, that's what resistors look like. They're like a carbon film resistor. We have diodes, which look like, let me pull up some. But we basically deal with all this. I have a capacitor here, so let me just show you guys that because I have it actually on hand. A capacitor is one of these. Um, it's able to store energy within it. So we can use that later on. So here's what my capacitor looks like. You can see right here. And power. This is working with all the high voltage systems. So you see those transformer lines outside. Basically what happens is we have our generation station here. 
and the power gets generated. So that could be wind turbines, hydropower, uh, from the steam power. Um, and that basically voltage goes through a step up transformer. So in the step up transformer, there is less coils on the first and more on the second. So you can see right here, I have more coils on the second one. So it's gonna step up the voltage. It goes through the transmission line and goes through the towers and is brought to a step down transformer. So we'll have more coils on the primary side, which is the first side than the secondary. We'll only have two. And then it goes back through and it's distributed all to the customers. And afterwards, uh, that's how we have to get the power from generation to distribution. So it involves the generation stations, the transformers, the transmission lines back to the step down transformer and finally uh, to the actual customer. Or you can take your own customized sequence. So for the customized sequence, if you want a different path other than those provided by the electrical engineering program, you have to consult your advisor and they will work it out for you, but you have to take a total of 12 units. So in each of these, you have to take 12 units, so either 12 units of power classes, 12 units of controls, and that's how you'll be able to graduate. And most of the time, you have to select a certain section in your senior year. And so you guys know, in our next meeting, we're going to dive into some of the fundamental concepts behind the components we use every day in electrical engineering. So you guys know we'll be talking about this, but you don't have to bring any materials. And I'm sorry again for the first meeting having to change it virtually and give the recording, but I hope to see you guys next week and we'll get out a new time. Thank you. Have a nice rest of your day. Bye.